I'll start off by saying that this is one of the best games you'll ever play on the Xbox 360. Released one year after Microsoft's next-gen launch, Gears of War received its share of the typical hype from around the industry, mostly due to the game's stunning visuals utilized with Epic's Unreal 3.0 technology. Normally, hype is just that and nothing more, but the publicity surrounding Gears of War wasn't entirely unmerited, as you'll soon find out when you first boot up the game. The backstory to Gears of War follows a narrative that's unique in its own right, having more in common with bloody war games than any science fiction game you've probably played. On the human-inhabited planet of Sarah, a once peaceful place, an energy crisis has sparked a world war between all the nations on the planet, reducing most of the civilization to mere rubble in the resulting conflict. Just when it seems things couldn't get any worse, a ruthless race of literally evil subterranean aliens called the Locusts dug their way out of the ground in a massive assault later called Emergence Day, with a single goal in mind, complete genocide of the human race. You assume the role of Marcus Phoenix, a veteran of the initial Locust conflict who's busted out of prison at the beginning of the game by his childhood pal, Dominic Santiago. The game relies heavily on backstory, and at no point in the game is it clearly stated how many of the events came about or even why Phoenix was in prison in the first place. Bearing that in mind, the journey that is Gears of War harbors enough intrigue to make you care about what's going to happen next, and the game's unique underground instead of outer space approach to aliens separates the narrative from most invasion stories as we've seen. Unlike most shooting games, you won't be running and jumping like a jackrabbit in arcade-style gunfights, and while there's nothing wrong with games that do that, the action that takes place on the planet Sarah, in spite of its over-the-top gore and sensationalized themes, actually has more in common with real-world combat than most other shooting games. This is realized in the fast cover system, around which all gameplay in Gears of War revolves. At the tap of a button, your character will slide into the nearest piece of cover available, ducking out of the enemy line of fire. From here you can blind fire, precision aim which exposes you to enemy fire, vault over the cover, or do a SWAT turn into another piece of cover. You'll need to utilize all of these abilities in order to make it through most areas in the game, and this becomes readily apparent on the harder difficulty settings. The cover system adds tons of depth and, dare I say, realism to the gameplay. And while Halo's rebounding health system does make an appearance, desperately ducking and shooting and advancing along the Locust flank makes it seem like you're actually fighting in a real war. Enemies are varied enough to present a decent set of challenges, as well as a few mini-boss fights here and there. Environments range from bombed-out urban war zones to horrific and eerie deserted villages, and even glowing subterranean mines. While the sound and visual effects are top-notch, environments stand out as the best-looking part of the game. That Geobot is showing more tunnel data than the Resonator. Oh, this is bullshit. You can play through the 4-6 to six hour single player campaign by yourself, but the best feature you'll discover in Gears of War is the cooperative campaign mode. You can blast your way through the campaign with one of your buddies over live, link, or split screen, and even though there's not a wide array of objective-based content like what we saw in Gra 2, the co-op in Gears of War is undeniably fun, and it's sure to satisfy. <laughs> Thankfully, the versus co-op in Gears of War is a very satisfying experience as well. There is a cap of only 8 players, and the 4 available modes don't do much to set themselves apart from one another, but the maps are designed to encourage the same sort of cover-based firefights that the campaign throws at you, which is a good thing. The only catch depends on how much the learning curve from first-person running and gunning to third-person cover-based action affected you. The new map packs and annex mode released later offer some more content on the competitive side of things, and while the versus multiplayer in Gears of War hasn't achieved the same status as Call of Duty 4 or Halo 3, it still has one thing going for it, it'll always be a lot of fun. It's for this reason that people will probably be hosting Gears of War online matches for a long time to come. Gears of War was one of the first Xbox 360 games to clearly establish itself as a must-have killer app that the console had previously lacked. To date, Gears of War continues to push the visual bar for Xbox 360 games, and few games since have been able to match. The game's unique style and underrated third-person design offers a refreshing break from the hordes of first-person shooters that are out there, giving it more than enough distinctive features to stand out in the crowd of other action titles. The intriguing campaign mode, while thoroughly enjoyable, can be a short trip, and a decent set of multiplayer options might not stand up to the content offered in other online shooters, but trying something this different from the norm 
rarely means you'll get everything right the first time around. Epic has created an exceptional action game that sets itself apart from their past work, as well as most other shooters on the market right now. And at the end of the line, it becomes clear that if there were ever a game that makes the Xbox 360 a worthy console, Gears of War is that game.